Hey everybody, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we're going to talk about the rumor mill, but not we're actually not going to be talking about the rumor mill. The rumor mill is You mean Intel? Intel. Uh yeah, we're not talking about Intel getting possibly acquired by Qualcomm or Apollo Group possibly making an investment. We actually have some real news that has been reported by a company by the actual management team. Okay, let's talk about the real news. Cutting through the noise here for you folks. <laughs> All right. Back in January, Synopsys announced they're going to be purchasing Ansys, which is a mechanical physics simulation software company. Make sure you check the video out that we did in January after that announcement came out. We'll have it linked right here in the video. Today, we're going to be discussing a few different things. The first is both of these stocks, Ansys and Synopsys, have been under some pressure since that announcement. So we'll talk about why that is. The second thing that we'll be discussing is what Synopsys has been doing in regards to shuffling their portfolio a little bit. They are focusing more on this mechanical and electrical convergence. And the final thing that we'll be discussing is this ditching of the optical solution groups by Synopsys. Will that help regulatory approval press forward? And does that make either stock a buy? Okay, so if you've been around for a while now, you know that we own both Synopsys and Cadence Design Systems. We consider both of these stocks as our EDA basket, kind of one in the same position, two top players in electrical design automation software. We put our dollar cost average plan on both on hold at the end of 2023. Of course, Synopsys stock got off to a hot start this year, but basically 0% return. It's underperformed the market this year. If you missed it, not very many of you caught this video, so maybe it was just bad timing on our part, but we explained why this is taking place last month. Synopsis is actually in the midst of a down cycle. You wouldn't know that from the revenue because the revenue keeps going up, but we explained extensively in that video how Cadence Design and Synopsis, their business cycles tend to center around free cash flow. Free cash flow is down. You'll see that at the very end of this episode when we do an update, a refresh, if you will, on some of our valuation notes on the company. But do check that video out if you missed it. If you need some help trying to figure out how these software companies have a particular cycle unique to them, that explains why the stock is down. Synopsys and Ansys both fit into the top of our semiconductor industry flow in EDA or electronic design automation and the IP or patents portion of the business. Some of the competitors or peers of Synopsys, Cadence Design Systems, Mentor Graphics, which is now part of Siemens, is also a big competitor. But you can see Ansys and Keysight Technologies are both smaller players in this EDA and IP space. And we often talk about there being some critical choke points in the semiconductor industry. Let's back up to our semi-industry flow where you can see that again. EDA is definitely one of those because you have just a few players that dominate this part of the global supply chain for semiconductors. And there's been actually more consolidation taking place as of late. Altium, based on Australia, just announced some weeks ago that it was finally purchased by Renesas in Japan, one of Japan's larger chip makers. So this space continues to consolidate. The players within it continue to strengthen their hold on this part of the supply chain. These are very, very powerful software businesses. But in this list of peers and competitors, we've added some arrows. Obviously, Ansys, if this acquisition goes through, will become part of Synopsys. But now we have an arrow going out of Synopsys to Keysight. What's up with that? This is where some of the IP portfolio is being shuffled around to help meet that regulatory approval. In January of this year, Synopsys announced that they're purchasing Ansys. At the time, that deal was valued at around $35 billion. The reason that is going to be a variable price is Ansys shareholders will partially be paid in Synopsys stock. And so this also actually goes back to point number one. Why has Ansys stock been falling this year? Well, it's because Synopsys stock has also been falling because of the down cycle for its particular business. If Ansys shareholders are getting paid in stock and the value of that stock has fallen, well, okay, now Ansys stock also gets valued a little bit less as well. Hopefully that clears up some questions regarding that. 
This episode is sponsored by public.com. Heads up everybody, time may be running out to lock in a 6.9% yield at public.com. Right now, bond yields are at their highest levels since 2009, and you can take advantage with a bond account, but here's the thing. The Fed has signaled potential rate cuts in September. And there probably will be more to come this year and into 2025. The good news is with a bond account, you can potentially lock in that 6.9% yield until 2028. And then when the Fed does lower interest rates, your yield actually remains the same. It's locked in, but you must act fast to take advantage of some of those highest bond yields in years. Discover how you can lock in a 6.9% yield until 2028. The new bond account only at public.com. Check it out now at public.com forward slash CSI. Synopsis has made a number of changes this year, shuffling different parts of their portfolio around. Maybe we can just briefly look at what is in Synopsis portfolio to begin with. So this slide is a map of all of the intellectual property, IP and patents that Synopsys owns. And they often license these out to their customers that then proceed to use these as part of their own semiconductor designs or electronic system designs, eventually also mechanical designs too, when ANSYS becomes part of Synopsys. What you won't see in this map though, is anything having to do with optical. At least it's not explicitly stated, this is where the optical solutions group resides. So we'll walk you through a few of the things Synopsys has done as of late to shore up what they want to focus on. And that is the actual chips and the chip packaging. And that's gonna become increasingly important as more semiconductor systems, electronic systems get put into mechanical systems. So that needs to work seamlessly with ANSYS. And so you don't see, again, much going on here with optical solutions. We'll get to that here in just a moment. Casey, walk us through some of the changes that get us up to this latest announcement. Synopsys has definitely made some moves to shore up their business. This is one of the first ones here this year in March. They did an acquisition of Intrinsic ID. Intrinsic ID is for semiconductor chip security. The second thing is that Synopsys decided to sell its software integrity business to Francisco Partners and Clear Lake Capital in May of this year. This sale of the software integrity business is valued at around $2.1 billion. And then this newest deal is the sale of their optics solutions group to Keysight. The optical solutions group, as Nick mentioned, is a small portion of Synopsys's business, and the details of this deal have not been disclosed yet. It's probably quite small, but the goal of this is to get that ANSYS deal pushed through. Yeah, it's mentioned a little bit later in this press release that was made on September 19th, that that is indeed the reason why they're proposing the sale to Keysight, is to get regulatory approval. So that begs the question then, why is this important? Why do they need to sell this optics group? Synopsis selling its its optical IP and patents to Keysight could be really important because ANSYS also has software for optics design and simulation. So it could be that regulators are taking a look at this and saying, hey, we can't have more industry bottleneck. We can't have this big giant dominant player with yet another vertical in the supply chain that controls both the patents and the design software both. So nothing about this has been announced just yet, but I have a suspicion that ANSYS might also make some sort of announcement at some point that maybe they're going to offload and sell their optics software design segment to someone as well. We'll see if that happens, but this is probably what's happening. Regulators are taking a look at this and saying, you know, let's keep the playing field even and competitive. Synopsis plus ANSYS, you don't need to have yet another chokehold on another part of the semiconductor supply chain. It's probably also worth mentioning here that Synopsys selling that optical patent portfolio and, and solutions group is contingent on the deal with ANSYS actually getting approval. So we'll see how this pans out, but a very noteworthy development here that seems to indicate Synopsys is actually making progress in getting this, this deal across the finish line. So does Keysight have an optics group? Indeed, they do. Keysight has been making some moves of its own, consolidating this portion of the industry to itself. Primarily, they play in the testing part of the industry. 
So a little bit less design, more actual testing of the equipment after it's actually been made. And in their portfolio is optics and photonics. You may be wondering what type of optics Nick is talking about with Keysight Technologies. Here's a example. These optics include the transceivers and receivers on maybe the end of an ethernet cable that's connecting multiple servers together, for example. Keysight Technologies already has some testing equipment and services for this field. And so adding this software portion of the business could really be an asset to them. Yeah, absolutely. I, again, having, having that combo, adding in some patents portfolio always strengthens a business. So it could make sense for Keysight. And obviously our concern here is Synopsys though. That's what's already in our portfolio. So Casey, I'm sure everybody's now wondering at this point, uh, do we have any thoughts on Synopsys stock after it's taken a bit of a tumble? Business keeps growing, but we are in a bit of a down cycle for free cash flow based profitability. Walk us through an assumption here, just one scenario using a reverse discounted cash flow method that gets us to fair value today of about $510 a share or $80 billion market cap. Okay, looking at the trailing 12 months earning per share of $9.62, trailing 12 month free cash flow per share of $6.40 gives us a blended per share amount of $8.01. We're assuming 25% per share profit growth for the next five years and a 6.5% terminal growth rate thereafter with a 10% discounted rate gets us to around $520 per share. Do we think this is a reasonable value, a reasonable bar to clear? Yeah, it's, it's still not a low bar. It's not going to be an easy thing to get 25% per share profit growth for five years. However, remember we mentioned free cash flow is down. That's part of Synopsys' business cycle, and they're in a down cycle now for the better part of a year. So one way they can get 25% per share profit growth, uh, a rebound in free cash flow when the down cycle comes to an end. You add in Ansys into the mix. They said by year two of combining the two companies together and squeezing out some efficiencies, that's the way it goes with acquisitions, unfortunately, eliminating duplicated roles and merging customer contracts where there's overlap, so on and so forth. That could provide the other bump. We said a month ago in that video, Casey, we were warming up to the idea of firing up our DCA on Synopsys and Cadence Design Systems again. And I think... Yeah, maybe now's the time. I think we're still warming up. I don't think we're going to do it immediately okay, just yet. Not now. <laughs> I don't know, stay tuned. It's a dollar cost average stock because it trades for a premium price, but these are great businesses. Thanks for watching this episode of Chip Stock Investor. Make sure you have subbed to the channel. We really appreciate it. Check out Semiconductor Insider. It's only $5 a month. That membership gets you live Q and A's, video notes, and a lot of discussion over on our Discord channel. Link is in the description below. See you all again soon here at Chip Stock Investor.